Next uh, panelist is uh, Dr. Chameau, who will uh, take us into our question and answers. Thank you. I don't have a PowerPoint presentation myself, and uh, my remarks are going to be, in many ways, there will be themes similar to what you just heard from my two colleagues, but with likely taking it more from the standpoint of the faculty, the standpoint of students, of things I see, I see happening in the world. As we were listening earlier to Franz Cordova, you know, uh, reminded me that uh, I was involved, I have a minor involvement in one of the first research center in 1985, uh, while at Purdue, the one of uh, Dr. Fu, who some of you may unfortunately passed away uh, at the beginning of that research center. And then because of my different uh, academic positions, I must have had involvement of some sort with at least a dozen of engineering research centers at Purdue, Georgia Tech, Caltech. So I have a good feeling of the, of the game. And also a little bit by accident again in Korea, I have had the chance for about 20 years to be involved in the creation of different centers in different parts of the world, including uh, Europe, Asia, and now the Middle East. So there is some, some experience that I have, I have had directly nuts and bolts of working with, with centers. And what is interesting, uh, I'm asked often to give lectures at different conferences or, or events in Asia and Europe, and usually they want me to talk about why is the engineer, engineering research center, why is the system in the US so effective? Uh, compared to the rest of the world. So here he asked me to talk maybe about a few things that could be useful from the out, <laughs> outside the US. So it's a different position for me. Uh, as we go through my remarks, I think maybe a couple of points I would like you to, to, re to remember from that, that and you, I, I will come to it. I think that you, we are seeing some centers being global by design and by practice. And I, will, I will expand on that. And also a point I would like to make and that I feel strongly about is that uh, research centers nowadays, I think need to provide a framework for focused goal mission oriented research, but that has to build upon and enable uh, free spirited curiosity driven research. Your example of the oil, the oil example, oil recovery. And we, we have in my case, I, um, we're running a center in that area where Clearly, you can dramatically change oil recovery if we use data better and also use better tools uh, for um, computer science with that physically. However, it requires some new science, something that we don't know well how to do. So let me make a few remarks in that. In a, during my remarks, those two points will be reason. First, uh, I'm seeing the past 15 years or so, faculty and students, especially faculty, who are really becoming much more mobile, global, and opportunistic, uh, and especially successful senior faculty. You know, they may have their main laboratory on one campus. Uh, however, their research, their scholarly activities span across several programs in the U.S. and the world. Uh, they are networked through technology, and, they, and their teams and facilities can be distributed around the world. Uh, in a science, uh, uh, you, have to, you have to start to have uh, uh, some kind of a brain circulation uh, taking place among those uh, faculty and, uh, and students. So one interesting challenge, and that's, I, I saw it especially when I, a few years ago when I was at, at Caltech, uh, can the university structure and policy keep up with our faculty? Uh, issues of conflict of commitment uh, seem to come up and sometimes old policies may need to, to adapt to this big global playing field. Uh, strategies to mentor and, mentor and retain faculty and to nurture the allegiance to, to the institution. And I think those things can sometimes test the skills of deans and, and provosts. Uh, we're not always as agile as maybe, <laughs> maybe they should be. Uh, and in fact, you see uh, research centers more and more the, in the past few years uh, to be used in different parts of the world uh, as a way to attract talented people. 
And that you see it happening in Asia, you see it happening in, in Europe, as well as in the Middle, in the Middle East, uh, where I'm currently are. And there are great examples, for instance, with, in Korea, Singapore, Switzerland, and other places. And uh, the, the, the entitlement is to bring researchers and, and students to, en to entice them to join an organization that are really a strong focus and provide them with long-term sustained opportunities. And I think something that you have to think of in your, uh, in your deliberations for our engineering research centers is this issue of long-term sustained uh, support. And I think there is an opportunity there for agencies and research universities in the US to consider joint leadership with uh, foreign institutions currently driving the creation of such new centers. And you gave examples in some of your remarks. And uh, in fact, uh, universities could promote and integrate a, a university campus in, in networks of research uh, and basically building upon the aspirations of their faculty and students who are already doing it. Now, another trend which has been really covered by my two, my two colleagues is that uh, corporations are, in my, at least my experience, again, Asia, Middle East, Europe, are extremely strong participants and driver in the creation of those new research centers, even more than believe that what may have been in the past in, in ERCs here in the, in, in the US. And they, they are involved not only in defining the research scope, but also in bringing together partners to the table and participating in the research mission at the outset. Uh, an interesting trend, and some of you may have different experiences or, or even disagree, is that I am seeing much improvement, and we could discuss it during the, 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 the working sessions, in the discussions regarding conflicts of interest and commercialization and disclosure policies. Those things are being solved more and more quickly, I believe, by corporations and research centers in different parts of the world. And I think it is something that I, uh, is a good thing. Related to all this, and I think there is uh, more and more a mandate uh, for, and as was already described, for research centers to play a strong role in knowledge transfer and economic development. Uh, the goals and operations associated with driving innovation and outcomes become part of the vision and design of the centers. I don't think it was the case in the older ERCs. You had great example you discussed in Germany and in the UK where it is happening, where from the onset, as you are planning the center, you also integrate and plan not only the strategy, but the operations of assuring a strong innovation uh, program. And it requires some differences compared to a classical uh, uh, center. Uh, to me, there is an important aspect and benefit of this mandate, and I, I have seen it with, uh, in, in, in the U.S. as well as where I am now, uh, is to leverage the entrepreneurial spirit and innovative mindset of students. I think, honestly, they are very often much more entrepreneurial and free-spirited than our faculty, and I think the centers can play a role in achieving that. Uh, International partnerships, I'm going to I mention that already, are becoming more and more prominent in all those centers. And increasingly, the funding is coming from both industry and research agencies. And uh, uh, this partnership, I think, between industries and, and, and different agencies, and uh, Europe is a good example, I think they have a benefit, possibly, of providing a stronger assurance to faculty of sustained funding for research. Uh, if the, the, funding, the, the funding is more consistent over time, uh, the research also uh, is conducted with the best facilities using the best equipment regardless of location. It is a network of people working together. And uh, there has been some, no, it's maybe a practical impact, there has been some studies recently that the, uh, the citation uh, index, the, 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 the impact of uh, such centers involving teams of international players is higher than those who don't, for good or bad, and also uh, is it true at the time we'll say. I think there is a great opportunity there for uh, NSF and, and the, US, uh, the US universities. You know, with all due respect to my great friends from, from Europe, and I'm from Europe too, 
there is still an amazing respect and track record of the US research universities in the world and, and, and agencies, including NSF. And I think this provides a great opportunity to focus, to, 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 leverage on, to leverage those trends and to focus on grand challenges that transcend international boundaries and to promote joint research investment, financial resources, human capital across the world. I think this can really also build upon the already faculty-driven collaboration in existence. And I think the, the, the US and NSF could take a, a stronger leadership there and provide and get benefits, including financial support and, and, and sharing of resources. So uh, another point I would like to make, and I mentioned it in my, in my, my, my remarks at the beginning, is that in the same way that Facebook is described as social by, by design, I think more and more centers are, are going to be global by design. Obviously, I'm biased because I had the opportunity to be involved at, at Georgia Tech and Caltech and now at CAST uh, with, with, with the promotion of such centers. I could give you the example of several of them where I was involved in the promotion and helping them create them. So I, be, I strongly believe in that. I can get, tell you that where I am now at CAST, we had no choice by design, in fact, by purpose. We, the, the university is centered around research centers driven by research center rather than being driven by academic units. And I think you should think about that. And it is driven around centers. The focus of those centers is mission-oriented and mission-oriented towards uh, great issues such as water, food, uh, the environment, energy, oil, and so on. But at the same time, recognizing that you have to have a, a, a mix and you have to have a balance between curiosity-driven research and more mission goal oriented uh, research, and they are international by design. I could give you the example right now of one we put in place recently involving a strong partnership between uh, several corporations in the US, one in Saudi Arabia, University of California, Santa Barbara, and CAST. And it is sponsored in part by industry, in part by uh, a national agency. And that those things are happening more and more, and by design, the faculty go and look for the people who are the best to create that new organization. Now, <clears throat> I think my, uh, uh, Ian already mentioned it. All this, I think, is leading to the opportunity to have uh, an increasingly global nature of research and inno innovation networks. And you see it already happening in different parts of the world. And I think the US NSF could take a stronger role, uh, a stronger role in that area. And there is an opportunity to take such a role. So, having said all this, I would like now to add a few words of caution, which may seem contract contradictory and maybe opposed to what I said. And here is my, my word of caution. Uh, it is easy when planning centers or new centers or other academic endeavors to fall in the trap of being everything to everyone and losing focus and not doing anything of significance. Uh, I am always amazed at the soup of buzzwords that we are all using, including me. Global, innovation, entrepreneurship, convergence, ecosystem, creativity, global talent, impact, multidisciplinary. We have used those yeah, words? Have, okay. Yeah. Including me, including, including Franz Cordova. Okay. I was reading this morning the requirements of the generation three of, of four ARCs. And many of those, they cover a wide spectrum of expectation. And I'm not certain that all those objectives can be met even with a significant level of funding of an ARC. So my advice, my words of caution, opposite to all everything I said before of being global, network, agile, and all those things, is that with whatever your committee decides for, for, for the center for the future, is that the expectations have to be realistic and some focus is a good thing. Maybe not all centers should be expected to cover the same basis. Also, another advice, and one I feel strongly about, is to keep up what works well. Uh, I am a strong believer, having come to, to, the, to this country from Europe as a, as a young man, I'm not a young man anymore, uh, that the US engineering research enterprise is more agile and honestly more effective than the European one, in major part, and it will maybe uh, because of the involvement of undergraduates in research. And I would be pleased to expand on that in, a, in, 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 in a sessions. 
And I would, I would encourage you to reinforce it through the centers. I think undergraduates have not played a strong a role strong enough in research centers in the past. And I can tell you, I'm convinced it is one of the major, major reasons we are ahead of the European research activities. Now, uh, another suggestion, very practical, uh, something that we don't do well in the US is in fact to, to foster the formation and preparation of postdocs for their after postdoc lives. Most of them don't go into academia and we don't do a good job there. I think research centers could, could do a major role and help the talent in this country. Finally, I'm also a strong believer that the US, the, the success of the US in research and innovation, especially through NSF, has been to tap into the creativity of the uh, nation's talent and, and enable them to pursue research without a specific end product immediately in mind. So although I told you that I love very much the mission-oriented goal, I think it has to be, to be done in a way that it, 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 it enables as well curiosity-driven work. And at the same time, that work should, uh, should be, uh, people should be encouraged to take the steps toward translation and commercialization, and it should be part of their expectations. So I, uh, I used, uh, uh, I made points very similar to what my colleagues made before, but there, I think there are still a few, a few words of question I wanted to, to make. Thank you. Thank you, uh, particularly for uh, highlighting some of the uh, human, the student, and the administrative aspects that are the challenges of some of, some of the implementation uh, measures that need to be taken. So 